Welcome to Sung's Garage. Now, this is more than just a place to work on cars. This is a place where I'm able to connect with people, talk story, and share them with the world. All right, today we share with you part two of our podcast with my good buddy Jeff Allen, who is in the movie picture car business. He shares with us his favorite car from his huge collection, like Ronin, a 63 Ford Falcon. You can, you can drive this car daily, by the way. Wow. Wait, how much horsepower is that one? 675. You can drive a 75 horsepower daily, for real. Yeah, really? look at this. It's, look at this. This is a, this is, you could buy this setup in a Mustang at a Ford dealer today. So wow. I have the same setup. It just, it's just wrapped in a, in a, what I think is a cooler, you know, body, which is a 63 Ford Falcon. And Jeff also shares a touching story selling the Skyline R34 from the first Fast and Furious he owned. And I, I asked him one day, I said, hey, I don't mean to be nosy, but why are you buying these fast cars? And he said, my wife died six months ago and I'm a workaholic and I never connected with my kids. And the only thing that I connect with with my kids is the Fast and Furious movies. Oh. Joining me today as co-host is David from the What to Watch panel. So I hope you guys enjoy. All right, y'all be good. Here's a debate that, that David and I had car related a while ago. Okay. This is his, this is his bandwidth of like car conversation. If he, had, <laughs> he was saying to me that he does not put gas in at the AM, PM. At the uh, Arco, right? Because he feels like either. they're a cheap guests. Yes. But does it really matter? Come on. Yes, like, yes, yes, yes. Oh. Yes, it does really matter. And uh, let me tell you why. I know this oh, for a fact. Please tell me. I, I, I'm the same way you – I'm probably the same way you guys are. I originally thought, what's the difference, right? It comes out no, of no, one – No, Dave part. thinks there's a difference. No, I, I said, said there's no difference. You're talking about the octane. It's the same octane. Yeah. And no, I said, no. Well, isn't okay. it like no, 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 no. It's um, that is not gas. that is not true. Let me tell. I'm gonna sit down to tell you this. This is no, 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 no. This is uh, this oh, is this interesting. Is, this is, this yeah, is, this is uh, we're getting deep information. <laughs> right, right. You do not. I'm serious. They buy a lower grade of fuel, AM, PM. Okay, I'm probably gonna get hate mail right now, but it is a true fact, and I have proof of this. We had a 67 Camaro uh, on the third season of my show. It was a wide body car with a big block in it. Well, I had said I, I need to head down to the gas station and get five gallons of premium unleaded to put in the car. We had pulled the motor. We were putting it back in. I need to start the car. Like any production, they don't want you leaving, right? So they're like, no, 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 we'll send a PA. So I said, okay, but make sure. I don't want, I don't want uh, regular unleaded. I don't even want the plus. I want premium. Premium yeah. and let it. So they come back with five gallons of gas. I pour it in the car. We start the oh. car. We have that moment. Yeah, you know, they do on reality TV. Wow, car started. Woo. Like I ever <laughs> had a thought it wasn't going to start, right? So I go to shut the car off and it starts diesel. And so I got livid, probably more than I should have, kind of lost my cool. And I was like, who the fuck bought this low grade piece of shit gas? Wow. So we they said no 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 we bought premium unleaded and i go bullshit they would not do this <laughs> on premium unleaded and so come to find out they sent uh another pa out to get five more gallons of gas we came back we poured it in the car hoping to elevate the octane level right hoping to stop the dieseling effect and uh sure enough start the car up let it run, get it warm, shut it off. It's still decent. So now I'm like livid. I go, you guys are just taking me for a fool. You're wanting to do this for drama and you think this is cool and it's bullshit. And literally they show me the receipts guys and they went and they bought it from a convenience store, premium and let it. And I yeah, said, yeah. Oh dude, this sucks. So we drained the fuel out. I kid you not. Wow. I went down, I sent the PA back with take a picture. At the Shell station, I want nothing but <laughs> super unleaded, and you bring that back to me. And sure enough, we did. We we put the five gallons back in, just like we did before. We started it up and never had a problem. Wow. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of, you know, I call it subgrade levels, whatever you want to call it. Some That must be some look, difference because if, it, you, if you can tell, 
it's like Coke and Pepsi, I guess. I mean, you can tell a little bit, but you know. Yeah. It's or like, you know what? Here's the thing too. Just like we talked about car dealers, maybe you have a gas station owner that's not on the up and up, right? And so he tells oh, the guy, man. "Go ahead and fill my premium tank with regular." Holy How are you going to know? Unless you're I, testing I can't it. tell. I mean, you can tell, but I can't tell. Well, and, but I might not have told if it was in my daily. You know, yeah, if I had yeah. to put it, if I had to put it in my five series Beamer and just driven around, I may not have known. But because I was in a, a you know, a high compression, you know, big block Camaro that uh, you know was was well over five hundred horsepower, it, it should have been able to run on ninety one, ninety three octane easy. Yeah. But it's not gonna, it's not gonna be happy at eighty seven. Right. You know. Yeah. Right. And so, and and you could tell it wasn't. And so, who knows what what that grade of fuel was. Right, right. Um, I guess so a I newer think, car, you can't tell, but older cars, you can, right? I would assume. I older mean, cars, you can tell a, lot, a little bit easier because they will they have that diesel effect. Yeah. Um, you know, newer cars, I, I guess if you were one of those, you know, and I don't know where uh, my parents What's get What's the diesel from. effect? What, what, like diesel? Are you talking about like... like yeah, what? When, when you, well, it's called the diesel effect. Basically, when you shut the car off, right? Yeah. It's, it, 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 it tries to stay running. With the ignition off, with everything. Oh. You never, you never had that happen where you, you shut a car off and it's like, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, and you're like, yeah, yeah, that's the diesel effect. That means you got bad gas. Wow, I have bad gas sometimes too. But I wonder if that's what under you have the diesel effect. Yeah, I do. Oh, this information. I don't know if I won this uh, discussion two years later. <laughs> you you I won it. I mean, there's always different degrees. It's like you know, it's like when people say, "Is there a difference in tequila?" I mean, it's the same. Yes, it's it's like um, you know, your your premium brands. What they tend to do is they will actually that you know octane level is is the minimum that that's going to be, yeah. and oftentimes it's it's one or two higher than what's posted. So versus maybe you've got the guy over here at this other store, Brand X, and he's like, yeah, I just put the 87 or 89 in my, you know, my 91 or I don't know. What are you guys at in California? 90 now? 91. Yeah. 91. 91. Okay. What are you guys? 93? 93? In Texas, we were 93. But now that I'm in, uh, in New Mexico, which I think of as New Hollywood, they've uh, lowered it to 91. <laughs> they want to be like oh. California. So, <laughs> so I, am, I, I I snuck in some fuel from Texas. Right? That's like funny. 20, you just sneak in fuel. <laughs> yeah, well. The black market. Yeah, I was like, well, I think I'm going to – I wasn't going to normally fill up all my fuel cans and bring them with me when I did the move. But I was like, oh, yeah, this is going to be the last hurrah for 93 for a while. Wow. It's back, to, back to buy an octane boost. You that, know. that is funny. Wow. Yeah. You can't just do an octane boost. You can't like put a supplement in there and just do an octane boost, can you? Or Yeah, totally. That, you have to. Yeah. I'm going to have to because like, uh, my, you know, some of the cars I have in my shop, my GTR and Ronin, the Falcon, um, they have to run on a, a minimum of 93. Uh, 91 would just, just I'm not going to say it's going to hurt it in the long run. Yeah. I, no, I would say it would, not in the short run it wouldn't hurt it, but in the long run it's going to start to uh, – you know, build up deposits and stuff in there. And so for like my GTR, it runs, it's 950 horsepower on 93 octane. And yeah. then if I go, it's 1,050 on E85, which I have never done because, I mean, for 100 horsepower, I'm like, really? If you can't beat someone with 950 horsepower, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you, 900 horsepower, that's crazy. That's yeah. so much. Yeah. What other hey, cars Jeff, do you have? Are you, did you bring yeah, let me, let me, let's, let's walk through here. Um, I haven't when you buy my, these, when, when you buy these, uh, movie cars what what do you what's your criteria what do you look for yeah the, a lot of a lot of my criteria for buying the cars is first it it has to be um a movie i liked uh, mm -hmm. secondly, <laughs> it has to you know it has to be a car i like um okay sorry this is like move-in stuff i'm a pack rat as sung knows i have a whole <laughs> a whole section of my building behind this these doors right here it's full of parts i told him that's crazy look at that so th that's my G gtr wow um, yeah um we did it we did it in-house pulled the motor did all the stuff it was uh uh ams alpha nine plus upgrade 
So um, I wanted to keep something that was still streetable. I think, you know, 1800 horsepower in a GTR is easily obtainable, but still it's not very drivable every day. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Yeah. Uh, this car is a, a 63 Volvo Amazon with the LS7 uh, Corvette motor in it. And then my probably hands down my favorite is Ronin, 63 Ford Falcon with, uh, let me just show you. Can you, yeah, can you flip that? Can you see it? Wow. So oh it's my got the, God, look at that. Oh. Yeah, this, this car, I wanted to sell it because he would, uh, I think he would just dig this. Um, he could, you could drive this car daily, by the way. Wow. Wait, how much horsepower is that one? 675. Oh. You can drive a 75 horsepower daily. For real, yeah. Really? Look at this. It's, look at this. This is a. This is. You could buy this setup in a Mustang at a Ford dealer today. So wow. I have the same setup. It just. It's just wrapped in a. In a, what I think is a cooler, you know, body, which is a '63 Ford Falcon. Yeah. So yeah, it's just a this is this is a basic stock, you know, five liter, motor, with the stage three supercharger and you know setup on it and. Uh, the car just hauls ass. And then one of the things that I wanted to do with it to make it super cool is I wanted to use every piece of that 2014 donor car. Let me open yeah. the door so I see it a little better. There. But inside, uh, you can see I used the dash and uh, wow. I used the whole console, steering wheel, and even down to the factory with Carl seats, which wow. was a mistake in hindsight because they're too heavy. Because oh. I got the airba airbags oh. in them and stuff, but for oh. the for the look, you know, it blew people's mind. They thought I took a car and uh, they thought I just put the body of the Falcon on a on a fourteen Mustang, so which wasn't the case. But uh, we did a triangulated uh, four bar link rear suspension. It's got forged line wheels. Really dirty right now. Sorry about that. But I haven't is had that a from a movie? Look. Is this from What's a movie? That? Is that from a movie or is that pretty much uh, your own creation? It's, it's my own creation, uh, but it did, uh, luckily for me, it wasn't quite the, the fast movie I wanted it to be in because, uh -huh. you know, I think everybody, every kid's dream is to have their car featured in a Fast and Furious yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe that's just me, but I got the phone call and uh, these cars, both the Volvo and this car and my Australian Ford Falcon all got shipped off to uh, Hawaii for Hobbs and Shaw. Oh, so, so yeah, not 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 quite the fast movie. You know, I would have much rather seen uh, Han get out of this. Yeah. You know, <laughs> plus, it, it, and think about it. If it wasn't a fast movie, it, I would have seen the car more. I mean, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. the rock is so big when he was standing in front of my car, I couldn't see the car. Yeah. You know, so I only is went. Han to see really is he only an import car? Or is he a muscle guy? Han. Are you asking? Are you? Yeah. Are you asking? Are you As asking my asking opinion? Or are you both asking or sung this question? I'm at, like, no, he's asking you. He's asking you, Jeff. What do you think? Oh, okay. Oh. I I think, I think Han is is a. Oh man, I I, I want to look at it as no. I don't. I think he crosses all genres. Yeah, I think, I think so. I was gonna say like he yeah. understands all cars, but yeah. you know, of course, the RX7 is like one of the more popular ones. But I feel like you know he. He he looks at a car and says, "I match it. Then I then I'll then I'll then I will abide to its power, you know, or yeah, maybe I, the I car think, will abide to him." <laughs> yeah, I think for I think for me, it, it's more that 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 character is is a true car guy, and he's the type of guy that's going to be like um, would drive this Roush powered Ford Falcon. Yeah, for yeah. he would respect the fact of what it is. Yeah, and. He, you would maximize its potential. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. 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 I mean, or even when you go back to uh, the original Tokyo Drift and you talk about Mona Lisa, I mean, that car was, you know, uh, wasn't the most popular by any means. It wasn't an R34. You know what I mean? It wasn't the Holy Grail. But for car guys, it was like, holy shit, this is a piece of art, you know? Mm. Yeah, and, yeah. and when it's Lucas great. Black tears the hell out of it, I think all of us were kind of crying there for a while. Because <laughs> I, I was like, get that dumbass hillbilly out from behind the wheel, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, I, I think that, that, that uh, I think Han's character could pr pretty much roll in anything. But it, I mean, he couldn't, I don't see him like in a, 
And, and like when I talk about like a heavy muscle car, like a road runner or a charger or anything like that, it's got to be um, more compact. Yeah. Uh, but it like your be, Falcon, like your Falcon, it would be the perfect Falcon, you know, I think like blend. I, yeah. You yeah. could roll like in a, you know, 500 horsepower Corvair, you know, something that's just yeah. like unique and weird, but at the same time, cool to the car community that knows what it is. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think he rolls up in a car that people would ask questions. If they're not really a car guy, they yeah, may yeah. go, what, what the hell is that? That is so cool. You know, like yeah, the right. Volvo, when I built that, everybody was like, what is that? Like a mini Cooper? <laughs> like, right. <laughs> but, you know, for me, yeah. that was, uh, that was the point of doing it because it's absurd, you know? Yeah. 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 It looks yeah. like a, it looks like a grown up mini Cooper. I mean, mini Cooper looks like the kid and that's mini Cooper's dad. That's, yeah, yeah. That's Mr. Cooper. That's just Mr. 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 Cooper. Mr. Cooper. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Cooper. Yeah. So, and then I was going to show you guys. I, I had uh, pulled this car up. This uh, is the '56 Corvette from uh, Ford versus Ferrari. Wow. Oh. And uh, it's a. That uh, one? Or wait, wait. it was just one of the. It was more one of the background cars that was one of the race cars in the race car scenes at Willow Springs mm -hmm. and at, even at um, you know Daytona. Oh, nice. Wow, so, man, that's beautiful. That is yeah. beautiful. I like, I love the color on that. It's, it's great. I know wow. the cream, right? It's like you would yeah, never think to paint like, a car. Yeah. Did I lose you guys? No. Yeah, for a second. My wife. It's like caramel. It's yeah. like caramel yeah. cream, huh? Yeah. Wow, yeah. I've never seen it. Cool. It's beautiful. One hundred six. That's that's one hundred six. Nice. And this car, this car actually did race, and not this particular car, but number one hundred six. I did some research on it. One hundred six was originally red. This car was also red, but because of Ferrari. Yeah. being synonymous with red they said let's paint it a different color for the movie yeah. and hence this is how mm. it turned out and uh mm. absolutely love it it's yeah. a it's a it's a really cool car so what's the stripe on yeah. the uh on the headlight there oh, those are just that's just tape can't yeah. explain what that is yeah. oh yeah, back in the day, if you were going to race a, a, a factory production car um, and you might be running it in possibility of nighttime, you didn't want to delete your headlights. So what you did was you put tape over uh -huh. them because if you picked up a rock from the track for the guy in front of you, you didn't yeah. want to shatter that glass. That was great. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'd have to yellow flag, you know, pull into the pits and uh, – do all that stuff. So they taped them off back then, which was, you know, it's kind of a cool look. Yeah. So yeah. I need to retape that one. Yeah. I did that yeah. to Opa. Look. See that? <laughs> you did. Look at you. Wow. Go, look brother. at you. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to, I, I tried it on the headlights, but it was too much. So I put it on the fog light. It's just enough. Yeah. It's that, it's an homage to that, Dave. That's why I did that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I have a lot to All learn. All right, hey, hey, Jeff, you have a fast. You have any fast cars in the garage? You have, you have a fast car, a oh, fast and furious car. No, I, I sold the last three fast cars I had. What did you so, have? I had, um, I had bought three. My last here. I'm gonna here talk to you from inside the cockpit. So anyway, yeah, look at I that. I had bought. Um, yeah, yeah, there we go. So I had bought uh, three cars from Furious Seven. Mainly because it was Paul Walker's movie. Um, I bought, I had uh, Dominic Toretto's Roadrunner. I had oh. Letty, uh, Letty Scooters. And then I had the fast attack vehicle that Jason Statham, you know, attacked them on Pike's Peak with. So, yeah. Wow. And I was for like two and a half years, and then uh, we were getting ready to this move. I was like, you know what? It's just time. Somebody needs to, somebody needs to have these cars and, and love them and go out and look out in the world, you know? That's is, nice it you. <laughs> is it easy? When you put on, the, when you put the cars on the market, do they, do they sell right away? Or yeah, they, they, they go off? Really fast. Um, yeah. I, I believe that there's, you know, at that point in time, we weren't, in, well, I call it now BC, you know, uh, before coronavirus. Uh, nobody was thinking, you know, uh, everybody was like gearing up for Fast 9. Everybody knew it was coming out. You know, that's kind of the best time to sell those cars is right when they've been there. Oh. Uh, 
You know, the cars that I own 28 cars from the franchise. Um, hopefully that number won't last and I'll uh, get some more eventually. Um, regret probably the, the one I regret most selling was, uh, I had two of the skylines from too fast. Oh, wow. Uh, crazy story about the first one from George Barris and I bought it at the Peterson museum and I had no idea. This is how naive I am. I thought the car was badass, but I had I, I knew they weren't, legal in the u.s but here i am you know my my family had a dealership in texas so i had a dealer plate i used to run around and you know chase cars down and bring them back to my house so literally bought it at the peterson put my dealer plate on it drove it home and my, in riverside is a highway patrol and he says is that what i think it is and uh -oh. I go, badass he goes dude if somebody would have put it over there to crush that bitch and i'm like no shit and he's like, yeah dude you can't be you can't be out cruising around in R34. They're not legal. And I go, well, I knew they weren't legal, but I have a dealer plate. They go, they don't give a shit. Wow. So, yeah. Um, I, I, I ended up, the, that was the stunt car that did the little jump. And uh, I uh, sold that car to a guy who lived in San Diego, but he was a Mexico citizen. So he registered in Mexico. And he could drive out of California and make a plate. So that was great. And then the, the hero car. The, 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 the Mac Daddy of the hero cars. Um, where was I? So, yeah, so the, I sold that uh, car to uh, the uh, CFO of Victoria's Secrets. And um, touching story about that is uh, he bought a few cars from me. He bought one of the uh, challengers from the show that actually year one and everything put a 426 real hemi in after the movie was over. And he ended up buying one of the triple X uh, GTOs from me. But the thing that got me with this guy was this guy had, you know, 550 Marinello's, uh, a lot of Ferrari stuff, you know, vintage and current. And just it, it, these cars didn't fit. And I, I asked him one day, I said, hey, I don't mean to be nosy, but why are you buying these fast cars? And he said, my wife died six months ago and I'm a workaholic and I never connected with my kids. And the only thing that I connect with with my kids is the Fast and Furious movies. Oh. So I wanted to buy these cars to show them how much I appreciate them and to get them involved in things that I like in the car world. And it was a common ground that we could talk. And I was like, I was literally floored. I was in tears on that phone call. And I thought, wow, that is super cool. You know, how to take something tragic and turn it into something beautiful. And that's what he did. And he literally, he legalized the hero car. He spent all the money in the world to get it legalized. But he had the money. <laughs> He's CFO yeah, of Victoria's right. Secrets. Everybody's buying underwear, right? Yeah. So, uh, and he had the GTO and he had the, and he had the, um, the hero uh, challenger from the show. And uh, I thought, wow, that's, that's the kind of guy that deserves that car, you know? Mm. So. Very you know, nice. Cool. Yeah. I don't know that Sung's ever going to let me drive Opa, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't Opa. know if you're going to fit in it. Every, Opa is for everyone. Everyone who wants to drive Opa, I, I give you my word that anybody can take I'll, – I'll toss you the keys. So any, Opa is for you to drive as long as you know how to drive a manual car. But I don't know if you're going to fit in, Jeff. It's tiny. Like, it's a tiny little – it's made for Mr. Miyagi pretty much. I think when <laughs> the big designers – we're making this car. They're like, I think there's going to be a movie called Karate Kid with a little Japanese man. We're going to make this car for him. So, <laughs> Did he have tiny. one of these? Did he have one of these trucks? No, nah, he had those American cars. Yeah, yeah. He, had yeah. The the one, he was talking about the ones in his garage or yeah. his, uh, in his, his, in his lake area or his uh, yeah, you, you know, koi pond You area. know, his little garden where yeah, uh, Daniel's son was painting the fences. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Those were all American. Yeah, he had, he had all American Chevys and Ford. Yeah, right? yeah he, I mean, he had a Jeez. lot of old stuff for sure. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, like it's like this 56 Corvette. I mean, in my old, my other weight, uh, I wouldn't have been able to fit behind the wheel. You know, 57 T-Birds, 56 Corvettes, they were like, the steering wheel was like, you know, up to here. So um, oh, wow. I understand it's probably pretty tight. But I'm one of those guys that didn't, it never stopped me, you know, from fitting yeah. in a car. You know, yeah. I bought I bought Eddie Money's 74 Pantera. And when I got in the car, May goes, are you comfortable? And I was like, yeah, completely. <laughs> you know, that, this is how I drove the car. Yeah. 
yeah. and I had the car for two years, and this is yeah. where this is how I drove yeah. it everywhere I went. Yeah. They could say, "Are you enjoying this?" And I'm like, "Totally." <laughs> So I'll stuff myself into anything that's cool. I'll just, you know, get lubed up with some Vaseline, slide right in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, here's a question before we, so maybe the last question before we end it, is that, you know, I, I've been thinking about, like, why are, are certain cars in movies so I become, they be, why are certain cars iconic and certain cars that we just overlook, right? Like, if you look at, I, I go back to the Bullet Mustang. There have been a lot of cars cool cars and films, but that one sticks out, right? And mm -hmm. when people talk about, you know, like Fast and Furious, the, the RX-7, the, the FD with the Bale sidekick, that one sticks out, right? And because you're in the business of buying these movie cars, what gives cars characters, Jeff? Is it the person or is it the, is the, the energy that's put into it? Or you think a car just naturally has soul because of its history, you know? What do you I think? think I th I think um, oftentimes it's character driven. Uh, I'll give you a prime example. Um, I was uh, I was one of the guys that well, they'll never give me credit, but I'll give myself credit. I'm the reason that Mitsubishi was involved in Too Fast, Too Furious. Um, I told the president in North America we need to get involved after the success of the first one, and uh, he kind of blew it off. But then look what happened. We had an Evo and we had an Eclipse Spider in there. The, you know, to give you an example, the Eclipse Spider, I mean, that car could be on eBay and nobody gives a shit. You know what I mean? Because it just, mm -hmm. it, it didn't resonate. Uh, the green Eclipse from the first one did resonate. Your Veilside uh, RX-7 was mind-blowing. That car was badass from start to finish. And those, those, those kind of cars that just resonate with people. A prime example was you take the R34. And, and the silver car was what? In the first maybe five minutes of the movie? Right, yeah. but it's very iconic, and it, yeah. and it yeah. was it, it stuck out in, in everybody's mind, and I think it was because it was un, unobtainable in the U.S. Uh, uh, you know, for for me, it was the the R thirty four. Well, when I got home, buying that first R thirty four from George Barris, Meg said, "What else was there?" And I go, "Suki's S two thousand, the RX seven, you know, that was originally one of the red ones that that Dom drove, yeah. but then they painted it orange for the sequel." Well, Meg flipped out. She's like why didn't you buy me this Suki's pink car? You know, and that just resonated with her. So I ended up buying that car like two years later for her. I looked ridiculous driving it down the road with all that pink shit, the pink fur and everything. And <laughs> I don't know, everybody thought I was coming out or something. <laughs> but yeah. I, bought it, I bought it for her and, and, it, and it resonated with her. She loved that car, you know, and uh, I think it's just stuff that you can relate to. And everybody, when they watch Bullet, there's nobody that didn't want to be Steve McQueen. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, Steve McQueen was so iconic and what a great actor and, and really a huge car enthusiast. And for him to be in that Mustang, he made that Mustang do shit that the Mustang really couldn't do. Mm -hmm. and, and on top of it, some, he kicked the shit out of a Mopar. So for the <laughs> Mopar, yeah. you know there was a lot of egg on their face what do you mean the charger can't hang with the mustang you know you got that kind of inner twirl fighting going on you know so yeah. I, th I think it's that i mean for example one of the car the movies that really influenced me early on was corvette summer and some people look oh, at that corvette, yeah. corvette yeah. and go that's the ugliest that's ass right. corvette ever made you know yeah. to me, yeah. it's beautiful you know yeah so and then there's the people like uh, a friend, a dear friend of mine owns the, one of the original left Christine's, you know, from the movie. Ooh, ooh, okay. Nice. We'll, see, we'll see your attention. But see, for oh. me, I looked at that car and I was like, okay, it kills people. Yeah, that's great. And I liked the movie. Don't get me wrong. I loved everything about it, but it's not a car that I wanted, but he owns it and it, he's passionate about that. Right. So, right. I love yeah. that car. You do? Yeah, I love it. Well, I love, anytime I, you want to go I love for the. I can totally relate with his obsession over the car because that's how I become. Like, I'm in the, like, my wife is getting, even though we're locked down and she thought it was an opportunity for us to do more things together, I'm in the garage every day because since Opa's got here, like, I get obsessed. I get completely obsessed over the car. Like, it, it's like taking over my life. And yesterday, so I sat there and said, if I died yesterday because I cut myself making a door card for this piece of junk car. Imagine what my wife would have, how she would have looked at this car. She would have crushed Opa. Or Opa would have left and become the next Christine. 
right? Like, right. <laughs> it killed right. Sung in his car. Uh, <laughs> he he right. died. He wasn't even driving it. He was just making a part and he died, right? Well, now right. that car is going to be haunted. <laughs> no, no, no. I feel like I, I, I don't look at it that way. It's like the blood. Like every car, you kind of have to bleed. Like blood needs to drop on the car. You ever see Red Violin? That movie Red Violin yeah, with Samuel Jackson. Yeah, no, yeah. So, so Jeff, it's about an old violin that is cursed, and everybody that has this violin throughout history dies, right? But yeah. they be they're great musicians, yeah, they're, they're like violins. geniuses, right? But they all die tragically, and the violin gets passed and passed. And the way it was created was that the violin maker was making this violin for his his uh, his his newborn son, but. The wife has a miscarriage and dies, and he has the blood of the baby and his wife, and he uses it to finish his the, the violin, and that's his last violin. And then wow. the violin goes throughout history, and and it, you know that's the last thing I would think of is put the blood on my violin and made it. <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. especially your baby and your wife's blood. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you ask that question like Eric. I always ask Eric like, why do you drive Lincoln's right? And he's like. Don't Who's Eric? Remember? Explain Eric, who Eric know, is. My mad scientist with the lab okay. coat. So Dave doesn't Eric, know who Eric is. Eric Abels. He's my he's he's my uh, mad scientist. He's he's, he's like your, the guy. He's your he's your cue. To yeah, he's my cue. Yeah. So when we, go, when, we, when we when I come up with a crazy idea like putting the, this Ronin or this Volvo together, I, I get Eric in on it because you know two is better than one, and and then we can go convince Meg together. It's a good idea. Okay. Uh, yeah. But no, like with Eric, he always drives Lincolns, right? And I'm like. What do, what do you see in these Lincolns, right? And he's like, well, don't you remember uh, Animal House? And oh, wow. Remember Animal House? Where they take the Lincoln and turn it into the death mobile and they oh. go cruising through and tear up the parade oh. and shit. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, I don't well, remember that. I gotta go back to that. Uh, right, I remember the movie because I laughed my ass off about, you know, because uh, you know, John Belushi was in it and he did some crazy shit. But they had a, a suicide Lincoln and they literally – fucked it all up and it didn't belong to the kid it belonged to his uncle or some or his father so he's crying about it so they make it into this death mobile and they go wreck, wreck the parade with it and eric eric it resonated with eric and ever since then he's had a fascination with lincoln's so i think it's just something that is relatable you know yeah. and, and, and something that you can sit there and say to yourself i mean i mean i've had my gtr at, at events and, and there's been bugattis and, and high, high-end Lamborghinis that are all tricked out next to it. And kids are tripping over them to get to the GTR because they're like, that's my dream car. And yeah. uh, I'm like, dude, you just you know, almost stepped on a $7 million Bugatti to look at my <laughs> GTR, you know? So, and, and it's just, I think, what resonates with people, you know? And uh, your RX-7 will be forever iconic. I mean, we need to find it and just get it back to you. Yeah, I agree. I Don't you? Yeah, I don't care. I don't like that car, though. You know that oh, my relationship with the. Do you think? Do you think? No, no, no. Like, like, I don't even. I don't even want it around me. You know why? Because this. I have such a horrible history with RX Seven. I had the. I had RX Seven. I had a '93 touring package before yeah. Tokyo Drift that nobody knew I had because I never drove. The turbos went out. It, had, it didn't even have thirty thousand miles on it, and that was a gift from my parents uh right after college for me not to be, be an actor to go back to law school my parents showed up to culver city because i was i had a roommate and i was taking the bus to go to uh work as a waiter and then take the bus to go to acting class and stuff and they came saw i had no car saw i was a waiter bought me this car and said, go be a lawyer. And I was like, I'll take the car, but I'm not going to be a lawyer. And they got so pissed. And then they, well, we're not going to help you with insurance or anything. I was like, I don't care. I didn't even want the car. And then I had to park it and it was parked in storage for years because uh, I couldn't oh. afford it. Right. So when I see the FD, when I see that veil side, first of all, the, the kid in the movie, it works, but there's some cars when you see in person, you go, Ugh. and then you see a picture of it. Like you see it in the movie and you go, whoa, that's a beautiful car. And that's why I always felt about the veil side. It's too much body kit. It's too much, it's too much plastic surgery. I don't, I don't like that. I, I don't, you know, like augmentation you is good when you don't notice it. Not when like 
you look at it and you go, I know that butt's not real. You go, that's too too much butt. And for <laughs> an RX-7, if you yeah, ever that. studied the, the history of the, the that RX-7 and the rotary engine, it was designed with so much precision. And when you stick all of that fiberglass and make it into, I, I look at it as like a rocket ship clown car. I don't like it. <laughs> okay, so now you're sounding just like Starsky from Starsky and Hutch. Uh, you know, uh -huh. they got stuck Why? with the red tomato, and he hated that car. Did you know that in the series, if, if you ever get a chance, look it up, Google it. He tried to wreck that thing and destroy uh -huh. it so many times. There's, there, he would say he would be like in a scene, and he would just throw it in reverse. Just oh, try wow. to tear it up. He hated that car. And so yeah. it's kind of funny to hear you say the same funny. thing. I like yeah, I love stories like that because then it gives more character and more dimension to to their character and the car. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I liked I mean, your that, truck. You know, your truck. Yeah, was yeah. Cool. yeah. That truck was cool. You I had fast four. Yeah, you I had two of them. I had the hero one, and oh, then you I did? had. The, yeah, I had I had two. I had the hero one and a stunt truck. Yeah, and the hero one is still in Lubbock. Uh, the guy owns it. I've got first right to it if it's ever available again. Uh, in fact, I, years later, I had to track down Tigo's truck, the hero of that. And so we had the match pair. That's so, hilarious. That's for yeah. the, for the, uh, for the, for the gas tank heist. Yeah. yeah. For the gas tank heist. Yeah. So the one that everybody was floored cause you were back and you weren't dead. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're all like, Whoa, what just happened? Whoa. I know. And, and, and it also, it's, it's, it's a scene, you know, that there's a, uh, a short film connected to that scene, right? in the DVD. Did you know that? Los Bandaderos. It's a short film that we went to the Dominican to shoot. And it's only in the DVD special release. Did you know that, Jeff? No, I need to, I need to see if I had that. Oh, Is it so in the big actually, wheel? Is it in the wheel kit with all of them? You, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know it could be. You could probably we, look it up online now, maybe. Oh, it's okay. online. But yeah. anyway, it's the, it's actually like a 12 minute, I think it's 12 or 25 minutes. Yeah, it's minute. a short story. Oh, yeah, from, about how, how we knew each other, like, you know, Tego and Don Omar, those characters, like why we know each other. So it actually goes back to the Dominican. So Letty, Dom, Tego, Tego and uh, uh, Don Omar. Uh, uh, yeah. those, what are those characters' names? What are they called? Tego and... Tego and I don't know. I don't know. Did the other guy have a name? Yeah, he, he did. never, anyway. even, yeah. Yeah, they he never spoke names. English. Yeah. No. Anyway. <laughs> but... Yeah, so there's a whole story about them, and uh, and what's funny is that, so the the young lady that's sitting next to me in the truck in the scene, right? No one asks who she is. Like, who is that person? Dude, like, when, when is that in the timeline? If you really think about it, is that pre Giselle or post Giselle, right? It's it's obviously right. it would be it would be I mean it's pre it's pre for Giselle right I mean pre well, it's meeting the same Giselle time, same. yeah oh, I see what you're saying yeah 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 no oh, yeah, it's that girl it's pre no well, one dude, cares no well no cares. Dude, okay first off nobody knew or it was not uh, uh, common knowledge that you were coming back in four at, at least to me so I was in I was in the theater opening night. And everybody just freaked the fuck out, right? Because here you are in this truck, and everybody's like, holy shit, what just happened, right? And everybody's like freaking out, and and we're like, is this a Star Trek episode where they use the time continuum? How the, the hell evil, did they just go on? <laughs> right. So I, once you realize that when you say the lines, I think I'm going to go to Japan and you know hang out or whatever you say to Dom in that Do some scene. crazy shit in Tokyo or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you yeah. do all that shit, Everybody's like, "Oh wow, we did, we, we we, you know, we went back in time. This is this four is before three, which is before, you know, after yeah. two, and you know, everybody started putting the pieces together. So I think, even though, it wouldn't matter how hot she was, <laughs> you superseded that you were back from yeah. the dead. Yeah, which yeah. Everybody's think, like, who, who cares about yeah. her? But you yeah. got to realize it is for for the viewer after Tokyo Drift, you were a player. You know, remember you had all the women with you and you had that yeah, whole yeah. place with the little, you know, uh, the in your garage, you had those bed things, the little, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, the pods. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you look like a, you know, like a sex palace, you know what I mean? <laughs> so you're just like, player, player, you know? So it would not be abnormal 
for some hot chick to be in your truck and you're like, Hey, get out and hook that shit up for me. Yeah. <laughs> but in, so, but what's interesting is now in fast nine, Dave's seen the movie. He's already seen it because he, he That's works not with fair, all this. Dave. Well, uh, he works. He's, he's been some, working uh, on the movie. He, he has sure. some, yeah, he has, he has some, it, he has some, he has his ways. Uh, but, uh, but it so and then the other guy fact, hooking up the thing had the justice for him. I don't even have that shirt either. Shit. Oh, you'll get one of those. He okay. doesn't have one either. He doesn't I don't have, have one. one yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, don't be too jealous. All right. <laughs> so in Fast Nine, it'll actually all be explained what Han was doing in those pods and why he had the garage, right, Dave? So it actually all that was a facade. I if you think about it. Right, I signed an NDA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, because yeah, I haven't seen the film that. either, so I'm I'm yeah. actually squeezing him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. <clears throat> anyway, before we get in trouble, thanks, Jeff. We'll come hey. and visit you. Hey, yeah, thanks, guys. man. Hey, David. Nice to meet you. Come out anytime, man. Drive whatever you want. Oh, Let's I will. It. Yeah, that would be yeah. fun. Yeah, we'll just wear masks and gloves, and hazmat suits, or you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever, it it whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. You guys be safe. All right. right, You you too, Jeff. All right. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye. All right. Thanks for tuning in to Sung's Garage. Now, big thanks to Jeff Allen for being such an awesome guy and to share all your personal stories of how your love for cars began. Now, you are definitely one lucky guy. I don't know if I'll ever get over those sleazy car salesmen out there, but I know who to call when I need help buying a car now. As always, let's all continue to stay indoors if possible and stay safe during these tough times. For all those medical first responders who are essential people helping, I truly send my thanks to all of you. All right, y'all be